All right. Well, my ticker's going at the bottom of the screen here. And, well, we are, well, less than 24 hours away from the beginning of the college lacrosse season. We're less than 24 hours away from, you know, starting down lower, lower to D1, you know, lower to D1 just to get it out of the way. Um, preseason rankings you see on your screen at the moment are from the U.S. Lax magazine. Those are those rankings from there. And you see the NLL standings popping up on your screen as well, along with some other stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. Now, this, has been a, this has been a long week, I'll tell you that much right now. I, I have not been able to just, I haven't been able to, you know, get up and just, like, record this, because this was supposed to come out last Saturday. It was promising Saturday. It just didn't happen. Uh, but, you know, for, first things first, the college cross season is finally here. Cannot wait. The schedules are trickling. Well, the schedules, all the schedules are out. Uh, of course, at the top are the top three, who I believe will all make it to the Final Four in Notre Dame, Virginia, and Duke, the defending national champions. Notre Dame, of course, opening up at number one. Number two, right behind them, is Duke. And three, Virginia. Number four, Penn State, Maryland, Johns Hopkins, Cornell, Army, Syracuse in the top ten, Yale, Denver, Georgetown, Michigan, who after a absolutely great year last year, uh, they're returning some guys from last year. And can Michigan repeat the success they had last year? Of course, Princeton. Rutgers is there for some reason. Delaware, really good team from the CAA. Um, of course, we all know what happened with Delaware. You know, they got a certain guy gone. Penn, you know, Boston U, of course. North Carolina is stuck down there. And um, Richmond is last. So the season is coming. The season is coming in just a couple days. Scrimmages have been, you know, going on and off, you know, throughout the last couple of weeks. And not too many conclusions I can draw from these scrimmages because, again, these are scrimmages. I do not care for scrimmages. What I care about are the actual results on the field, the actual games that you have played, the actual schedules and stuff like that. So that is the stuff I care about. That's the stuff we all should care about. Scrimmages do not show me anything. You know, maybe other people and their stuff like that, but scrimmages to me, um, it doesn't work in indoor football, and it doesn't work here in college cross. I'm just sorry. So, yeah. So, first things first, my Final Four again, my other Final Four teams. I just want to show you all real quick what my Final Four is looking like. My other Final Four teams are Notre Dame, Virginia, and Johns Hopkins. Now, I think this Johns Hopkins team is a really, really talented team. Then again, I think Notre Dame and Virginia are really, really talented. Of course, Brennan O'Neill is back for Duke. Connor Schellenberger, Peyton Cormier, back for Virginia. One of the cabinets, I think it's Pat. Um, Liam Entsman as well. Back for Notre Dame, and then you know, teams like Johns Hopkins are in there, and Army's in there as well. I had, I was gonna say Army for a second, but I was like, no, I don't think they returned enough pieces, and I don't know if the pieces there at Army are going to gel well enough for them to make it back to the promised land, which is the final four. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be enough for them. Um, I'm just going to get it out the way right now. My Tawara Turn Award winner prediction is going to be a two-timer. It's going to be Renan O'Neill. I, I don't I don't doubt that for a second. Again, the top three have the toughest schedules in the country. It's a long, ruling grind. You've seen the TV schedules and stuff like that come out. And, of course, speaking of my Tawara Turn Award, my national champion prediction, of course, it's going to be the Duke Blue Devils. You know, so this year, I think Duke will overcome Notre Dame in the national championship. They're going to meet once in the regular season on a Sunday, and it's going to be a beautiful Sunday. It'll be, um, I think it'll be the last day of the NBA regular season. There's a Panther City game that's going to be on ESPNU that I have uh, crossed off my calendar at this point. I'm trying to go to a different game at this point. 
So, yeah, this season, you know, it's going to start with some real goodies. Of course, as usual, the Johns Hopkins-Syracuse game is a neutral site. And that's, like, later in February, of course. Um, there's plenty of ESPN Plus games. There's plenty of ACC Network games. There's plenty of ESPNU games. Definitely less than last year, but they're still there. Um, of course, lacrosse TV. That's free, so you know there's a off chance you could catch um, a Penn State game. There's a Penn State game on there. There is a Virginia game on Lacrosse TV as well. I think there's a Michigan game on there too. So yeah, just catch those when you can. First couple weeks, honestly, you know, watch out for the games between the Big Ten and the ACC. So that means Michigan, Virginia on the tenth, and. Maryland Syracuse on the 17th. That'll be a good day to just balance it out with a lot of sports for me. That's going to be a great day. Um, the 25th of February will be a, a damn good one. Georgetown, Notre Dame. Um, those games will, you know, kind of cap off, you know, February and everything like that. So those are like the big ones to start February, of course. We'll talk again later on in the month, you know, at the PLL Championship Series. And we'll talk a little bit and see how, you know, some of those games shook out and everything like that. So, again, those three games right there, um, at least the first two that I talked about, you know, uh, the Maryland-Syracuse game, which is really going to tell us a lot about Syracuse because, again, they're returning a lot of guys as well. Spolina, of course. Maryland, you know, definitely dangerous. Uh, Cursed is still at Cornell, so, you know, going to be interesting. And Army, you know, has one of the best defenses. But, again, is that defense going to gel well? That's the question. Um, in the NLL right now, again, nobody is undefeated anymore. Um, that's the price to pay of making the video so late. The Firewolves have fallen. Toronto, you know, you know, they, they, they are still hanging in there. You look at the standings in the NL right now. You see everything's kind of, you know, all out of whack. You know, you have a New York team that's actually fighting really good. You know, of course, Georgia, the Swarm are just just absolutely, they're, they're doing damn good stuff. You know, yet other form for the, the way the playoffs work, you'd have a Buffalo-Georgia matchup as of this moment. Um you know, Rochester would be in, Panther City, of course, would be in. Uh, I think the most disappointing team so far is probably Saskatchewan because they're one in four and they just don't look like a team. And again, I said like a couple months ago that I think this team, that Saskatchewan team, is playoff material. But of course, you know, the, the same guys are showing out as usual. Of course, the Buffalo guys are showing out, Lyle showing out, Teat showing out. Um, Panther City put up a Beating on Las Vegas. And I think Las Vegas is the worst team in the NLL by a country mile. Uh, but definitely Saskatchewan being at the bottom is probably the most disappointing thing. So for me, right now, I'm just kind of reeling off of that prediction right there. Um, of course, there is the PLL Championship Series. Of course, that is sixes lacrosse. Now, I'm still debating, do I want to watch the VLL Championship Series, at least the final, well, at least watch the final. Um, as you know, the PLL has kind of alienated me with a little bit with the whole team analysis thing. I no longer have a team as I'm not going to support a Philadelphia team. I think we touch base on that. I'm not going to support anything Philadelphia. I don't like the city of Philadelphia. They have, some, they have some really good food down there, though. Really good food. Uh, I've never been to Philadelphia, but I knew, though, from seeing, you know, videos and stuff. They probably have some good food. But, uh, yeah. So, the Water Dogs, the Cannons, the Archers, and the Redwoods will all the will all participate in the PLL Championship Series. What else got announced was a Unleashed All-Star game for the women that will take place on the 17th, which is a Sunday. Of course, that's going to be streaming only, though, so might want to get ESPN Plus for that. And then the MSL has got a couple things. Oakville and Owen Sound, they're both back. So we have a seven-team major series lacrosse again. What, what 
the MSL also did was go to a 12-game schedule and a three-round playoff. The first round will be a best of five, and then the next two rounds will be a best of seven. So that is going to be very intriguing. Um, hopefully at some point during the season, you know, I get some lacrosse guys to interview, maybe even, you know, D, D2, D3. I mean, we'll be trying to, you know, do as much lacrosse as I can. Um, I don't know about, you know, you know, I probably may or may not watch the D2 or D3 championships this year, at least on the men's side. On the women's side, yeah, I'm still up in the air about that. As you all know, I don't really support most other women's sports aside from women's basketball. Don't really care about the others. You know, so like softball, don't care about that. Um, you know, the women's tackle football, don't don't care about that league, even though it gets massive exposure and everything like that. Uh what else is that? Oh, National Women's Soccer League. I, I try and keep up with it for media purposes because I do like to, you know, dabble and look at those media deals and everything like that, you know, so I can see, you know, what, what's going to keep my attention on a Saturday or a Sunday in the summertime when it's, you know, boring as hell outside um, and completely, you know, 100 plus degrees. But the uh, the NWSL does not appeal to me at all. Um, but we'll see, you know, maybe the D1 Women's Championship, I'll definitely try and see, but I don't know. I don't – there's there's too many, you know, games of lacrosse, and it's already hard enough keeping up with box and field. You, you think the women's game – I know I know there's some good stuff, you know, you know, in the women's game. You know, I try. I, tr I do try. I do try. I, I've tried, you know, Athletes Unlimited. To you know, I just try to keep up with everything, you know, as major as it can. Um, I don't even have anything about the women's game right now, to be completely honest with you. Um, I could throw up a dart and say, like, Boston College, North Carolina, and Northwestern off the top of my head right now. And I know there's some big games involving those three teams, you know, that I read the other day. But, you know, the times are kind of, you know, wonky. You know, as far as watching these games go, like live, like you have a top five matchup between like Boston College and North Carolina, it's like on a Tuesday. Like, I'm not going to be able to sit down for that. I'm far too busy for all that. So, we'll probably come back and, you know, talk about, you know, see if there's some intriguing results in the women's game. Of course, you know, there was the, there's been the whole thing where we've been, you know, we added, a D1 team to the men's side, and then we lost one, and then we, you know, added one, and then we lost one again. So it's 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 been kind of weird, been kind of weird. You know, we, we gained one, but we lost Lindenwood. You know, Lemoyne's here, but Lindenwood's gone. So we're kind of stuck. Women's game keeps on growing. It's like 120 teams now. There's going to be more next year and everything like that. So it's going to be great. Um, for the women's game and everything like that. But yeah, most important, you know, the women's all-star game, that game is going to be a intriguing one. Again, just hate the fact that it's going to be streaming only. I can't, <laughs> that's not the way to get me into the women's game, Mickey Mouse, but it's fine. So enjoy the season. I will be watching Vermont Syracuse on Saturday, you know, kind of double that up with the Houston, Kansas college basketball game. You know, and gonna be gonna be looking at both screens very intensely of Syracuse, especially because you know Syracuse is a team a lot of people have a lot of hype about, but I just don't see it. But we'll see. Um, and of course, those couple of games, you know, I try and you know stay with the games that are on actual television, not the streaming only stuff, because it's not. It wasn't like it was a couple of seasons ago where you know I could just you know fire it up. And be able to, you know, or I could fire up the 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 thing I had to stream, or rather the site I used to stream. You know, basically every lacrosse game, you know, that I could stream, and you know, but now I can't do that no more. So, gotta stick to linear. I'm not paying for ESPN Plus. I think you all know that it's entirely too much money. But yeah, um, what do y'all think of the uh, college lacrosse season? It's coming. 
Um, I know I asked the poll a couple weeks ago, do you think it's going to be national champions? Um, not too many people were down with that, but it's fine. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to the PLL Championship Series? You know, is it going to excite you enough to want to watch sixes or anything like that? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how, how the PLL Championship Series final goes for me. I'm still iffy on it. And of course, the NLL, you know, action packed wall breaking stuff. There's a couple games that are going to be on like ESPNU in February. So make sure you, you know, find your TV provider because ESPNU really doesn't get a lot of viewers. So find your, find your nearest provider and go ahead and fire up whatever device you have and get ready to watch some balls to the wall box lacrosse action. You know, the war indoors, man. The war indoors. And for the rest of you, uh, let's have a great season. Uh, man, I'm so ready for Saturday. I'm, I'm, again, I'm going to be watching that Syracuse team intensely on Saturday. They got a lot of games on ESPN. They got a lot of games. And I'm going to see if they're frauds or not. And watch, and watch all my predictions be completely wrong. Well, at least one of them. I, I don't think the Tuaraton Award prediction is going to be wrong. I think, think it's pretty unanimous that O'Neill will repeat. Unless Shella Burker does something. Or one of the Kavanaugh's. Maybe even cursed. Or some surprise guy. But definitely the, the Final Four National Championship. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about those predictions. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't backfire in my face like the NFL did, and potentially the NBA, maybe college basketball. We'll see. We'll see how everything goes. Again, I'm kind of rambling to just pad the video time out, so I'm going to see y'all later on Friday night to talk the NHL for the first time. Can't wait to talk about that. I'm ready. I'm excited for the NHL.